Hello everybody and welcome back. So today I wanted to talk about getting real-time playback in DaVinci Resolve. So DaVinci Resolve is a super powerful color grading tool, a great editor. It does audio, it does VFX and it has del delivery built into one app or one program. But that also means it can be pretty resource demanding and pretty taxing on almost any computer. And one of the questions I see a lot is how do I get real-time playback on my machine? So luckily, Blackmagic has built in several ways you can do that in DaVinci Resolve. And let me show you four ways or four things you can check. And then I'm gonna finish off this video with a super pro tip that'll give you the ability to squeeze out a little bit more of your machine. So let's jump right in and um, let's just look at this timeline. If you go to your, we're in the edit tab and if you go to your inspector and file, you can see the codec and resolution. So I have a couple of red, 5K, 4K, another 4K clip and a red, 6k and finally here i have a red 8k clip and if i go to my project settings you can see i set everything up on an 8k timeline and on the color page you can see i've added a noise reduction this is a neat noise reduction this is very taxing on any system and 8k clip raw with noise reduction on 8k timeline if i press play you can see up here the status indicator. So it's green when it's plays at real time and red when it's not. And then you can see the frame rate here. It's only playing three frames a second on a 25 frame clip. So not too impressive, but luckily there's things we can do. The first thing you want to do is go up into your preferences and then you want to go to user, go down to playback settings, and by default, performance mode should be set to automatic. Now, performance mode is something uh, uh, Blackmagic built into DaVinci Resolve lately. And it just reads the specs of your system and optimizes everything for the, the spec you have on your system. Obviously, it cannot make your, your computer faster, but it can optimize how it plays and what it shows. And just make sure it's on or you can try to disable it or manually remove some of the optimizations it does. Normally you'll get the best result by just having it set to automatic. You can also squeeze out a little bit more if you try, try to hide your UI or minimize the interface during playback. So click save and that's the first thing you can do. So the second thing you can do, now I'm playing in an 8K timeline. So if you go up to playback and you go down to timeline proxy resolution, you'll see you get the option to choose full half a quarter. So let's just try quarter and press play and watch the indicator up here. And now it plays back at real time. Now timeline proxy resolution is basically just changing your timeline resolution. So it'll be the same effect if you go to your project manager and change your timeline to quarter of what you have it set to. That'll give you the exact same. This is just a quicker and easy way to check out different resolutions. You can tweak the resolutions or the options even further if you go back to your project settings. Under the master settings, you have your proxy media and format and resolution, and you can try to change a, to a different codec, see if that works even better for you. So you do have an option to tweak it a little bit further. Now, if you have footage that's giving you issues like H.264, H.265, changing your timeline resolution is not going to do you any good. So then you will need to go to the next option, which is optimized media. Optimized media is often referred to as offline proxies. It's very useful if you have H.264, H.265 files, if you have raw or DPX sequences that can be really taxing on your computer. So what you do is you right click on your clip that you have issues with. Let's just make sure I put this back into full. 
And again, let's just press play and check. I'm getting a couple of frames. It, it just needs a few seconds to settle down. So I'm getting three and a half frames. But what I can do is I can right click and I can choose generate optimized media. And DaVinci Resolve will generate an optimized version of this clip alone. If you right click on one clip, it will only generate optimized media on that one clip. So once it's done, it's generating an optimized version. And the good thing about this is you don't need to relink your original footage to your when you're in the deliver page. So let me just show that. DaVinci Resolve will do that itself. So if you go to your advanced settings and the deliver tab, down here you will have the option to, to use optimized media. If you generated that and you just wanna push out a quick uh, video for review and a quick upload, then you don't need the, maybe the full original files. You can speed things up a bit by enabling use optimized media. But if you don't and you wanna deliver a master or a full finished video, don't do anything. Just make sure this is unchecked, which it will be by default and DaVinci will automatically relink the original media and push out the best version for you. Another thing is you can of course tweak this again like proxy media by going to your project settings under master settings, optimize media and you have instead of just half quarter you can even change the resolution of the file and you can change the format on Mac it's set to ProRes 422HQ by default but you can change it to a faster easier codec to play. The last thing I want to show you is caching. So if you have a transition between two clips and you just want to check these two clips or you have one clip that's causing you issues you can cache your whole timeline or you can cache this one clip. So the way you do that is if you have this clip selected, we go back up to playback and you have render cache. It will be set to none by default. If you change it to smart, DaVinci Resolve will cache out the timeline and cache out all the clips that's giving you issues. And if you go to the color page and you have clips enabled up here, if you have this enabled, you can see the timeline down here and you can see the same red indicator, meaning these clips are being cached at the moment. When it's blue, it means it's done caching and you can kind of follow along. Maybe that's something you want to do and go grab a cup of coffee and when you get back, it's done. Just be aware that if you make any changes, if you move clips around, edit them or add effects, DaVinci will need to recache those clips. So let's go back to the edit page. Let's turn that off. Render cache none. And then the other option you have is to set it to user. So you can tell DaVinci, I want to tell you which clip to cache. Don't cache the whole timeline, just this one clip. So we have this AK clip, I want to cache this. So the way you do that is you right click on the clip and you have two cache option, options. The render cache fusion output is if you have raw footage and you can debayer it uh, beforehand. So when you get to the deliver page, the delivery will be much faster. It doesn't need to debayer it again. But for your playback and for your editing and color grading purposes, you choose render cache color output. And DaVinci Resolve will cache only this one clip. So obviously that's going to be much quicker and you get the same red and blue indicators telling you how far you've gone. You can move your mouse around and DaVinci will still keep caching, but if you start to do other stuff like moving clips around or working in DaVinci, it will stop caching and then it will start again. And it will by default start after five seconds. So if you go into project settings, master settings, you can see down here, by default it will start after five seconds. And if you want to, you could change that to one second. And then as soon as you're finished done something, one second later, it will start caching. Now, 
once you're done, cache files can be rather large, so you can clean that out when you're done with your project if you don't need them anymore. You go to playback, you go to delete render cache, and we delete all the renders. As I told you, there is another tip you can do, another thing you can do to optimize even further, and that is you can put these things together. So you can go into playback timeline, you can set your timeline to quarter, you can render cache and generate optimized media, and you can cache this one clip. So you can put everything together, and by doing that, if none of the first things are working, then 100% you're gonna be able to find a way to get real-time smooth playback on your machine. So I hope you like this quick tutorial about how to optimize media for smooth playback. If you did, please consider subscribing. Give us a like, it really helps getting us out there to more people. And if you have any questions, please just post one in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.